Hi, I'm Derek Hilton, and my channel is all about photographing and filming wildlife. Now, what have I got in store for you today? Let's take a look. Hi, and welcome to my office. It's raining, it's starting to rain. It's flooded out, but we'll persevere. Today's subject, what's in the bag for a four day hike? I'll be splashing some details up on the screen just to save some time, like weights and stuff like that. The bag I'm using for this hike is the F-Stop Agena 40 litre. It is not designed for what I'm about to do with it. These straps are far too thin in width and in depth. They really cut in after two hours. So I've got some foam, expansion foam for concreting just to slip in underneath. I haven't velcroed them or anything, so they will move around a little bit, but they'll help me out when the going gets tough, just to soften things up on the shoulder. Okay, so we have on the outside, that's my sleeping mattress. There's two of those, they're the eight mil thin foam. Two together works really well. Ultra light, everything about this weekend is about ultra light. Got my uh, sleeping bag on the side. Now these straps, they double up as tourniquets if you get bitten by a snake but you've got to be inventive well, I've been chased indoors it's absolutely bucketing down outside and it's likely to stay that way for the rest of the day and a bit into tomorrow so I've made a temporary studio alright my ICU is the medium slope 7D Mark II with a 70 to 300 millimeter lens kit lens and my big flash heap of batteries for this, the 300, 360 LED Mimic light. That'll help me out in the campsite at night as well as using it to film with at night. I'm sacrificing quite a bit here for the sake of weight. Because I won't be using the 7D Mark II all that much. I'm leaving my L lens at home, 75 to 300 millimeter. Swapped it for my uh, bit of a crappy old lens. It's 75 to 300 millimeter as well. The problem is it doesn't focus very well. It's a little bit stuttery, and if I'm doing close-ups, it jams up a lot. All right, so that's what we've got in our ICU to my bum bag. Batteries for the 7D Mark II. A pocket knife, whistle, bit of paper, can use it for the white balance as well as writing people's names down that I meet on the trail, pen, cleaning gear for my lenses, a few other bits and pieces. Well, let's move on to clothing. Alright, so the jumper I'm wearing is ultra thin, ultra light. Every bit of clothing I'm taking is ultra light, ultra thin. Quick drying. Really important when we're out on the trail that things dry really quick. I'm not going to take much of uh, clothing, so I want what I'm not wearing to dry while I'm either walking or at the campsite within an hour. Socks, quick drying. I'll write down up there somewhere how long they take to dry. Beanie. And the company that they're from. A pair of shorts. The company that I love to buy their gear because styling and the material is really thin, ultra light and dries ultra quick and that's Columbia, the Canadian mob. The jacket is not from them, splash it up there what it is. Right, this is a wind jacket but it's also 100% waterproof. Very comfortable, feels quite stylish when you're wearing it. Slight rubbery feel to it. My ultra light, pack away to nothing, waterproof jacket. Just helps keep the heat in better when it's over that jacket. It's good for the wind, keeps it out, but really keeping the heat in when you're non active, you're just sitting there. This works really well, and of course, it's really waterproof. My pants are ultra light, ultra quick drying, 20 minutes. The jacket for my XF300 to keep it dry and out of the rain. Well, let's fill our tummy. 
powdered milk for a cuppa and all the other things like muesli cups of tea trail mix I put that in my muesli uh, and um, in what I'm going to have for lunches couscous work. they work nicely together now this guy makes really good couscous recipes here really tasty and they don't have a lot of the preservatives and crap in it that you get in the other stuff. It slows me down a bit. I feel quite tired when I have a lot of that crap. Muesli bars. It's hard to eat. Well, it's hard for me to eat when I'm walking, so they'll be alright. Chew them down. Make me feel good. My dinners at night is the freeze dried uh, gourmet meals. Got some really good ones there. And my luxury item is powdered instant cappuccinos. Uh, yeah, awesome they are. Emergency items. First aid kit. Got tons of stuff in there. I'll write it all up there, what's in there. Two phones. That is just a good old fashioned work phone. Works really well, tough as nails. Drop it as many times as you like. And I've got a message on there I better have a look at. Uh, yeah, uh, it picks up the reception reasonably well in bad areas where this touch screen doesn't, but just in case I can pick up the weather, just an extra phone to take with me in case. And it's also a good reflector for picking up aeroplanes or helicopters when you've broken your leg or whatever. Always take that with me, bit of toilet paper. Well, I'm all packed, ready to go down to Wilson's Prom and do my four day hike. So let's get going, shall we? Well, hi and welcome to Wilson's Promontory. I'm at the most southernest point, which is Roaring Meg, the tip of Victoria, the mainland. After that's Tassie. What's happened is I've been interviewing lots of people throughout the day. I've done a lot of filming of wildlife and uh, the environment and having an absolute ball. And I've had a disaster. My card has been wiped. So my apologies to those people that have gone home that I interviewed. They were really good interviews too. I was having a lot of fun. They're gone. Now I have to start again. Never mind. Right, so I've got my camp set up. i my last couple before I go to bed. In the morning, 4 o'clock, I'm packing up, heading to the lighthouse. Two hour walk, I think it is, with my headlamps on and stuff. Get to the lighthouse, get ready for the sun rising and do a bit of time lapse of the sun coming up. Well that is a scorpion. I'm walking in the dark up to the lighthouse and I've seen a few of these on the road. Well, good morning down at the lighthouse, almost. It's just up there. Thought I'd stop and just tell you that this is Magic Hour. You can see I've got beautiful colours on me. That's why they call it Magic Hour. You get that beautiful warm tones. Food on the plants behind me. And this is the best time to take photographs of birds in flight or just landscapes. Disappointed with yesterday, we can't cry over spilt milk. Lighthouse behind me, and the sun has risen already. I had to stop and do some uh, filming, a bit of uh, time lapse of the sun coming up. Not particularly in the greats, but I was trying to get to the lookout, but I ran out of time and I had to stop and do it where I was. But it looks alright. Good view of the lighthouse. Sun rays up beautifully. Got a huge day today, so I'll continue along the way. We'll have a look at what bits and pieces I can find. There's lots of flowers out, some really uh, interesting bugs that are going on as well. We'll get going and try and get a hell of a lot of footage to make up for yesterday.
live found a beautiful spot for a bit of a picnic. I'm just going to put the kettle on, listen to the waterfall. It's a beautiful little set up here, but a bit dark, covered over by all the fiends. So I'll probably get attacked by mozzies, so I won't be staying here long. Yeah, I've been on the trail for four hours. Don't know how much longer I've got because I'm, I've been stopping a fair bit. Filming uh, flowers and bits and pieces as I've gone along. Now we have to get a little inventive when we're out in the scrub. I forgot my mug. So I've had to pull all the glass out of my spare lens. Quite an expensive one too. Uh, actually, I'm pulling your leg. It's actually a mug in the shape, design of a lens. Cute little novelty. My wife uh, bought it for me to come on this trip. Cool, 10 bucks, bargain. Well, I'm pretty sure I'm close to Little Waterloo Bay. I can smell it in the air. Well, how silly was I? I've still got a long way to go. I can see the bay. There's the lighthouse. As far as distance is concerned, I haven't actually gone a long way in the past couple of hours. It doesn't seem like it when you look at where the lighthouse is there. Last 4Ks. Oh man, I'll tell you what, it's like a mirage. You can see it, it just keeps pushing away. The more miles you do, the further away it pushes. It's unbelievable. And uh, so far, I've been really pleased with how I've gone. Um, my uh, ability to kick in the gear and going gets tough and dig in uh, yeah it's still there oh yeah I'm fairly happy with myself a little bit to go get my breath back stop whinging and push on see you at little Waterloo <sighs> That was unbelievable. It was like a scene out of Monty Python. Every step I took, I had to just keep laughing. The things that the prom threw at me, it was like it was saying, hang on a minute, you've had an easy day. Let's show you what hard really is. All of a sudden the sand starts getting soft. Then the wind picks up, throws a whole heap of sand in my face. And all I could do Always was laugh. Look on the bright side of death. <laughs> I can't go Just on. I'll have to die here. Why won't anybody help me? Get up, my son. You can do it. Who are you? Are you God? If that's who you want me to be, I'll be God. You are God. Why? Well, I'm so tired. Why did you make the sand soft? And just to finish it off as though you were laughing at me, you throw sand in my face. Well, God's got to get his fun somehow. And just to inspire you, to help you out, make it to the campsite, I did some anti kindness. In the park. Kind. Oh, the agile, of course. Agile. Okay. Always you better not be tricking me. The bright side of death. 
just <sighs> well, I am officially an Iron Man. That was an unbelievable test of strength and character. But I did it and I'm here. Couldn't actually get into the swing of what was around me. It's far too uh, difficult. Just had to blank out and focus on one step at a time. Have a little snooze. And I'm going to hit the beach for a swim. Get these muscles uh, toned up again. And have a wash in that freezing cold creek. <sighs> Catch you later on. Right, I'll show you my little tent. It's um, sort of a hybrid tent, uh, swag sort of thing. Now I got this from Anaconda. Absolute bargain, 50 bucks, so I've thrown it out. It was the last of its kind in the shop. Uh, the makers of these were redesigning the anthem and also changing the colour. Alright, so let's just see how quick this is to correct. Voila, it's done. All we do is just put four pegs in, in the corners, two at the back to stretch this out. So there you go. That's my tent and I put a fly over it so um, I can sit underneath if it's raining and to keep the rain off this as well. I have some helpful hints for you around the campsite. Maybe something you haven't thought of yet. Oh, I've got me billy here. I need to boil it up. My little camp stove there, the little portable one. The head fits into that. Put it on your belt, wherever. Great little tool to have. When it gets a bit windy, like it is now, we want our burner to be as efficient as possible so we don't lose gas, unnecessary gas. So I put some tin foil in my bag. I put two for this hike, just in case this one rips or whatever. Uh, as windshields, lightweight, easy to pack, packs away to nothing. It's wrapped around like that on the other side. So I've got my adjuster there. And it works really well, heats up the kettle very efficiently. Right, my next one is the most important tool that you can get out of the forest. And that is a stick with a V in it. Endless possibilities you can do with that. I'm using them as pegs. Slow them down. It should hold quite well. It's also good if you break your ankle or whatever. You can use them as a crutch, not this one, because it's a bit small, but you get the use, don't you? Also, uh, for clothesline, is very helpful there. As well as making a shelter, put a couple of bigger ones of these in the ground, four of them. Put another piece of wood across each way, and you've got yourself a bit of a frame to put a tarp over. Get yourself out of the rain. Very helpful little tool. Uh, just hidden in the forest, you just have to go look for them. Well, it's dinner time, getting myself ready with a freeze dried packet of classic curry beef, and that's from Bat Country. It's a New Zealand mob. This one takes a cup of water, let it sit for 10 minutes, and serve it out. We have mixed curry beef with rice and vegetables. So, well, good morning. Didn't get any colour in the sky for my time lapse this morning. But still worked out pretty good. Had that boat in there, was a bit of interest moving around, clouds were moving, so it was enough to look reasonably well. Now I've decided to go home today. So I'm gonna have some brekkie, cuppa, and then hit the trail. Might get an interview with a couple that I interviewed on my first day. Unfortunately, I've lost all that. Uh, yeah, they, they said they were quite happy to do it, but it's whether or not they're still there when I get moving. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Stop talking and get myself uh, some brick.
Just in case you were dying to know what I have for breakfast, well, it's muesli. Put a bit of trail mix in there, fruit and nuts. And the cappuccino. Oh, kettle's boiling, so I'll get into it. Well, I'm all packed, got my travel mug. I'm gonna head off to the car park, go home. Now, Little Waterloo Bay is one of the best camping sites, in my opinion, because you've got direct access to the beach. It's uh, 30 metres away from my little camp. It's the last one on the trail. And the last at the very end is uh, only about 100 metres away. Uh, yeah, so for me, I prefer this one. It's the best place. I'm rabbit, not so. I'm going. Relax, ready to go. Yeah. As I'm walking along the trail, meet up with some very interesting people and some great characters, and a couple of great characters right here. Uh, just introduce yourselves, just your first name. Sure, uh, my name's Steve. I'm Robbie. Well, I've been talking with these guys for the past few days, and this is our second interview. Because, uh, like what I told you before, had a bit of an accident, but thank you very much for the re-interview. Oh, no problem. <laughs> and now, uh, you've been talking about where you come from, but so just talk to the camera and tell, say where you, where you were born and uh, where you're living now. Okay, gee, where I was born, uh, in a little place called Kahuna in Northern Victoria. Um, and uh, now I'm living in Germany, in Mannheim. Yeah. With your... With my wife, yeah. of course. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and uh, where, what country were you born? I was born in Germany, in a small town called Kleve, and now we both live together in Manhattan. Still in Germany. And uh, what's the weather like? Is it better than Australia? Ooh, at the moment it might be I don't know, actually. pretty similar, I think, um, mm -hmm. except for today, maybe. Yeah. yeah, I guess only because spring has uh, not been really around yet. Yes, yeah. uh, pretty much everywhere, I think, in yeah, the world. So. How have you enjoyed your walk around Wilson's property? Oh, it was fantastic. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Hard work, but fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We all got tortured yesterday doing the same trail. Yep. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. And it was nice to meet you. Pleasure. Nice maybe, to meet you too. Yeah. And maybe we might cross paths again out in the great outdoors. Who knows? Who knows? That's why I'm heading back out that way. Take me about an hour or so to get to the main track. Yeah, right up and through the gully, past those big rocks there you can see. What an awesome view. And I had some fantastic stuff on my first day here at Wilson's Prom. There was some magnificent views of beaches and oh, that was a fantastic place to have a house right here. Looking at that and looking back at the beach, the other side, I'll swing the camera around. You get a little bit of a view. There you go. Oh. Oops, lost the camera. There it is. Very windy day today, so I'm going to put my hat on. Just there. Help stop the wind from uh, blowing on the mic. So hopefully you can hear me all right. All right, I've got a couple of tips for you as you're walking through the scrub. You now, keeping hydrated is the number one thing when you're doing a long hike. I like to have the bladder, so I've got the tube down here, ready to go. Now, to avoid getting a stomach uh, problem, feel bloated and all that by drinking too much. It's a little often, so every 15 minutes, I have uh, two little sucks, just tiny ones. And that's where the bladder comes in handy because you. Can, can't get a big mouthful in one go that'll upset you. My other tip is what I did last night after my long seven hour hike yesterday. Every couple of hours I walked in the ocean, freezing cold, stinging my skin, but it helps with the joints. Uh, being able to get some blood supply through into your muscles and your joints and just, I feel really good today because of it. They, they were really sore when I finished the walk. But just doing that every couple of hours, Really well. Walking along the trail, come up against a couple of young fellas that I've met at Little Waterloo. Yep. We're almost back to the car park. Yep. Well, just introduce yourself. Okay. Just give me your first names. Victor's my name. Hi. Vangel. 
but oh god, he's a little bit camera shy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a little bit. <laughs> All right. So, um, what state of Australia do you come from, or do you come from another country? No, I'm from Melbourne, yeah, Melbourne. Camberwell. Ah, right. I'm from uh, in the Dandenong Ranges, from Emerald. Yep. So not far away from you guys. And how has your awesome trip been? Good so far. We it's been, been really good, yeah. I'll just grab the camera for a second. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, it's, um, it's almost over. We've only got about 45 minutes walk left up the hill. So we started on Friday morning, went out to Sealers, then through to Refuge Cove, spent the night at Refuge, and then we walked on Saturday through to Little Waterloo Bay. Awesome. Camped there. It's just an awesome place to come to. Absolutely. Through, How often do you come here? Oh, I haven't been here for three, three or four years, I think. Yeah. It's been a while. Okay, yeah. Well, you've been here for a while. Oh, I've been coming since 1975, so there you are. I've been coming here since I was about seven years old. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's only been 20 years then, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll wrap it up. Yep. Um, what is the first thing you're going to have when you get back down to the uh, Tidal River, out of the shop? I think I'm going to have a fizzy drink. Man, an ice cream and a coffee. <laughs> a milkshake. A yeah, chocolate one if yeah, I can get something one. Something like that, yeah. Thank you very cool. much, guys. Nice no worries, to thank you. you. Right. Cheers. I'll see you. And I'll race you to the top. No, yeah, you well, won't. You can, I'll let you win. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Just having a bit of a wash, a little break, before I do the last leg of the climb up the hill to the car park. Very windy. Up there, I don't think I'd be able to talk to you to say uh, that's the end of it, folks. So I'll do it here. It's not quite so windy. I've had an awesome adventure. Ticked off a couple of things off my bucket list. The most southernest part of Victoria, Roaring Meg. Saw the lighthouse. Did my time lapse. It was really good. Got some people walking past me again. Uh, yeah, and that tough walk. I've always wanted to do that tough walk from the lighthouse down to Little Waterloo Bay. An absolute ball, met a lot of interesting people, had some good conversations. <sighs> now, if you uh, like to subscribe, click on the subscription button down below and you'll get notification whenever I do anything else. And if you'd like to go and have a look at all the things I've been doing over the years, click on my icon down below. And just remember, if you don't do, you don't get. So get out there and start photographing and filming wildlife. And don't go away, I've got some bloopers. My light is going up and down for some silly reason. Now what's happened? <laughs> now what's up, fool? Get up, my son. Good morning. I'll just help the microphone a little bit. Hopefully you can hear me alright. Pretty girls. I think we are. Oh, well, you've got to sit in there too, don't you? <laughs> there you go, mate. That's yours, not mine. Okay, thanks. Oh, You're welcome. Is it clean? I don't know. Are we getting paid for this? No. Oh.